wrapping up practice number 10, a uh, really intense physical day, the typical time of uh, a spring football where we work multiple situations. Uh, heavy emphasis today for you guys to know, of course, always technique and fundamentals, starting with block destruction. You know, both sides of the ball get a chance to work on uh, defeating blocks, single blocks, double teams, down blocks, reach blocks, all that stuff, um, as well as um, working some of that stuff on the perimeter, letting the skill guys get after it too. Uh, team run play action, multiple personnel groupings, a lot of third and medium and long emphasis, as well as a red zone play it period, and then finish off the day with a really, really competitive overtime period, splitting the squads and putting them on opposite sidelines and just calling the game, okay? And uh, and hats off to the defense. They brought it today. It was a different type of intensity, different type of communication. They showed up and showed up big. So really competitive uh, and expecting this type of competitive to carry over and um, for us to stay at it to continue to have a successful spring. Open it up to questions. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Mario, upon uh, looking back at the film from Saturday and, and Tuesday and today, just did you see separation uh, in the young quarterback group there uh, to make a, a, I don't want to say a change, but to give one uh, more reps with the twos or any reps with the ones uh, this week or, or going forward? Well, you know what? They're still getting their uh, even reps, and I think it, their performances merit that. After Saturday, we'll take a look at it again. Uh, they all do things well. Uh, they've all taken their turns with their mistakes also. The most important part is right now they're getting a ton of reps. They all are. And um, might be a good idea next time I come in, I'll, I'll bring in the actual number of plays and the actual number of passes they've thrown and decisions they've made in the running game. But it is, you know, you're looking at 280 reps, something of that nature, minimum, not counting your seven-on-seven -seven periods and the other stuff. We go, you know, when we go spring ball, we go. So we want to make it not only fair, we want to make it productive. So we'll hopefully have some more info on that for you guys next time. AJ Jacobson, Rivals. Hey, Coach, I was just wondering now that you've had the uh, the benefit of seeing the film from the scrimmage, any of the offensive linemen kind of now that you've seen that stand out and you go, yeah, nice job. Well, a guy that uh, just keeps coming and coming because he's He's playing with his feet in the ground, getting his hands inside, playing with great leverage is George, George Moore, um, being very physical, very accurate with his hands. Um, TJ Bass has been a very physically dominant uh, player. I think he's his name gets lost out there. He doesn't get much of the credit, but he's, he's really becoming something special. But I think all those guys are doing a great job. You've heard a lot about the guys that have started here this past year. Guys that really got to be pointed out. Always Alex Forsyth, of course, as a leader because he's, he's a guy that started for us. But uh, Dawson, Jaramillo has done a really, really good job. Um, gosh, I could go right down the line because, you know, I just – you can. You can. We'd be here for a little bit. They're popping. Um, they're popping. I know a guy like Stephen Jones. I don't know if you've had a chance to speak with him a little bit. He's down to 338 pounds, very lean, could run all day, multiple position value, has played left, has played right, has played inside, done just about everything except snap the ball. Uh, the young guys still continue to shine. You know, J.D., uh, Jonathan Dennis, I got to really single him out because he's jumped in there, him and Marcus Harper, at multiple positions, and they are pushing, pushing hard for playing time. Um, proud of Faope, you know, getting down, he's lost – a lot of weight he needed to shed, and he's moving great, very physical, large human, the human eclipse, we call him, you know, him and Logan Sagapulo just, uh, when those guys fit you, I mean, it's, you know, imagine that, those two guys fit you, and then cross patterns behind them, I mean, you might not find them for half a day, so <laughs> things like that have really been popping out there in practice, uh, really, really proud of those guys. Julian Minnesota, KZI. Mario, we saw glimpses of it on Saturday, but what excites you the most about what this offense could look like in the fall now with a full spring with Coach Moorhead? It just feels like a complete offense. It feels like you've had an offseason, like you've had time to really jump into the details of the playbook because if you really want to get good at what you do, you got to know what to do, how to do it, and why we're doing it that certain way. And those are the levels and the things we're hitting on now. When guys understand that, they can play really fast. Uh, Coach Moore has done uh, an awesome job of incorporating everybody and really spreading the ball around. 
And uh, the combination of creating explosive plays, of using misdirection, of uh, pushing the ball down the field, also getting it out there uh, horizontally and uh, getting downhill in the run game as well as getting wide and outside in the run game. So just a very, we feel like we're, 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 we're getting to a point where the entire playbook is going to be, uh, you know, something that we can use and he's just using the personnel that, that we've acquired and that we've developed. So very excited about the offense. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Yeah, with Anthony being so experienced and the other guys being inexperienced and with him getting all the, the first team reps, I mean, how much of an uphill battle is it right now, do you think, for, for some of these younger guys to, to challenge him and maybe take this from him this fall? Well, I wouldn't call it uphill. I think if you present it to your team that way, I think you lose the concept of competition, and I think you hurt your team. I think the worst thing you can do is make any player on the team too comfortable. Um, I'll, at the same time, you have to be real, and Anthony has has earned the reps that he has gotten, and we don't sense at all any entitlement from him. And, and, and Instead, what you see is a guy that's really taken ownership and has a lot of pride in what he does, and a guy that you can coach hard and – that responds to that. And a guy that's also grooming the younger guys, knowing that those younger guys are going to be thrust into situations where they compete for with him for reps. So all in all, I, um, yeah, I would never for any of these positions, cause you know what guys, you just never know. You never know what a guy's going to do by practice 14. You never know what he's going to look like after another off season, another summer of conditioning, and then what he's going to do when he comes out there in uh, in fall ball, fall practice. So, um, like that's the way we look at it. Brian, Thurman, Richard Guard. Mario, after what he did last season for you, uh, Jamal Hill filling in for Javon, making some spectacular plays in the Pac-12 title game. Seems like a guy with a really high ceiling. What is the next evolution for him in, in on your team? Just keep keep the uh, the limit the sky. Just keep him going up. He's a special guy, special player, special person. Really starting to develop as a leader as well. I think sometimes we, uh, we don't realize these guys are young now. You know, you got a season and really what? Seven games under your belt, but it's moving fast because now all of a sudden it's year three. And uh, after having made the plays that he's made and the big games that he's done them in, now we're, we lean on guys like that and he responds really well. So Jamal, if we're running our special teams coverage and it's – He's going to be the first one up there just flying down the field and trying to light somebody up, playing physical, playing with technique. And when he's off the field, he's going to grab the younger guys. He's going to coach them. You know, he's going to be an extension of the coaching staff and a really strong advocate and uh, a guy that really implements and and enforces the culture of what we do and how we do things. So can't say enough great things about him. Huge year coming up for him. A huge future for Jamal Hill. Tyson Alger, The Athletic. Um, you've, you've talked a fair amount about Logan Sagapulu, Sok Sagapulu, yeah, I'm, I screwed that, Sok Sagapulu this uh, spring. When when you guys got him last fall coming off of his mission, just like what, what sort of shape was he in? And then also on your end from an evaluation standpoint, like put, putting the faith in a player to sign him and then wait two years, and in this case it was a year and a half for him to come back, like how much trust and faith do you have to have put into that player that two years later, when you when you open up that gift, that he's going to be in a position to contribute to your football team. Well, he, he comes from an exceptional family, uh, a family that looked us dead in the eye and said, if this is where he chooses to go and signs with, this is where he's going to come back to when the time is right. And uh, isn't that awesome to know that this day and age that's that still exists, right? It's uh, he was raised right. He was brought up to do things the right way, to always give his best effort to stay humble. And that's what he's brought to the table. This is a very large human being. Like when you put him in the DEXA machine, which measures bone density and, um, you know, body fat, muscle composition. I mean, this guy, he tests out like, like a Tyrannosaur. I and mean, he's got just large bones, big structure, heavy muscle density, a lot of power. This guy will, he will naturally squat, you know, and in the 700 pound range, I know you've seen the videos his upper body strength matches that. And now that he's put himself at a playing weight where he's, he's nearing his optimal weight. Uh, but now where he's functional and he's strong, um, you know, the trust is in the fact that his DNA, his upbringing, what we saw on tape and the relationship we built with him, 
he has completely upheld his side of uh, of the agreement. And we're proud of him. He's got a big future. He's a physical, physical guy. He is fun to be around. And uh, really glad he's here. Matt Cream, 247 Sports. Yeah, Mario, where has Anthony Brown progressed from where he was last year till now? We're at, it, it is at a point now where it's, he is getting all the quarterback reps. Where are you seeing this improvement to, to have him be in that position to get all those reps? Two things that's, that's really stick out are pocket presence and decision-making. And not only making the right decision, but making it quickly. Uh, he's always been a very accurate passer. You know, leaving Boston College and coming over here, not having the spring and really not being able to be involved in the summer, jumping in a fall ball and then having that cut off, that's a lot. No matter how much experience you have, that's a lot on a quarterback. So for him to be able to get the reps that he's had and to respond and have the success that he's had, um, he just every day he gains more and more trust of the players and the coaching staff. But and that being said, the other quarterbacks are gaining a lot of trust as well. Uh, Anthony has done a really, really good job and uh, with the players, with his progression, with all that stuff. Team pass has really helped him a lot. It's helped all our quarterbacks a lot, which is we, we, we deviate and we kind of get away from seven on seven just because you're, you're going against a whistle, you know, and not much resistance when it's just air and a coach blowing a whistle. So uh, we've really we've created situations where that pocket is uncomfortable. It's constricted. Uh, it also incorporates scramble drill, things that are real live football, situational ball, and it's paid off. He's doing a great job. So you do more team passing than seven on seven passing. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. James. With turnover is such an emphasis for the defense, Mario, this, uh, this spring, insofar as you can measure it uh, and the progress there, how do you feel like there has been progress? Obviously, we saw on Saturday, Steve, with an interception, Bennett nearly with one. Barone, I couldn't tell if it hit the turf or not, but looked like it was either a PBU or a pick. But what have you been able to assess in terms of making those improvements you're looking for? Well, when, uh, when you make it a huge point of emphasis, um, it has to be more than verbal. And that's what the coaching staff has done. That's what the players have done. Today was a day where it really, really popped. Today, they were extremely active in terms of communication, getting around the football and getting multiple hats of the ball. Everybody, it seemed like, you know, it was one of those days where it seems like they had an extra guy out there all the time. Um, but it's paying dividends. It is. And, uh, and we need it, right? If you look at critical statistics in football and how the game has changed. That's one that really, you know, still sticks out as a uh, determinant factor in uh, teams having successful seasons and not certainly an area that we uh, had to build upon from last year, because last year we just didn't take it away much and we, we gave it away more than we, we typically have. So on both sides of the ball, it's a really big point of emphasis. So we're spending a lot of time on it. Eric. Coach, it seems like it's far away, but in 10 days it will be the spring game in Ots and a couple were just, do you guys have an idea on the format and then reaction to the release you guys paid me on, on Saturday about more fans in the stands, how exciting will it be to have even more people there to enjoy it with you? Yeah, it was, I'll tell you, this past Saturday was an awesome feeling for everybody. It really was. And next Saturday will be even better format. We're going to do our best to, to play football, you know, uh, like a regular game, I should say, I'm sorry. We're going to uh, to try to get uh, enough to where it feels and looks like a game, at least for a half, you know. But uh, we want to make it as much game-like as possible. Look, we uh, we practice smart. We practice hard, but we practice smart. We're physical, but we stay up off the ground. Um, and this is another opportunity to get better. And that's how our guys see it. Our guys know that we have to play football and play situational football as much as possible. Playing in front of fans is something that our guys and really not many guys have – done in over a year you know there's a lot of value to playing in front of people and just it's no longer ambient noise from a speaker it's a live crowd right being able to block that out being able to go and take care of your assignments and play football and be dialed in and locked in so uh, but we can expect uh you know your typical typical spring game here in eugene we have time for two more ryan thorburn register guard Mario, I think you said you guys have installed enough to last for two and a half seasons already. Uh, given that you've thrown so much at these guys, what do you kind of want the focus to be for this last third of spring practice? Sure. Well, we still have a couple of days of four minute, two minute, which that always presents situations within themselves. Uh, and a couple more days to short yards and goal line. We've, we're incorporating 
red zone, third down ball, short, medium, and long all the time. We're incorporating two-minute drill in every single practice. So by the end of spring ball, we would have hit our benchmarks for all those situations and then some, which is going to provide us with great cut-ups, great experience, great teaching tapes for the offseason. Um, but the, the message today when we were done with practice is that we just got to stay at it. You know, there can't be any type of fading into, okay, I just practiced 10, now we're getting to the last couple. It just doesn't It doesn't work that way. Not for a team that's trying to get better and trying to continue to elevate the standard. And uh, the older guys, they've done a really good job of pressing that issue. Added competition has made our program better. It certainly has upped uh, the level of urgency out there. You could see it, you could feel it, the intensity. So... All those things will be emphasized to make sure that everything we're doing is quality work to be able to give us the best opportunity to win football games. Last question, James. Mario, just a couple of rules changes that I wanted your thoughts on. Prop just announced the change to the overtime rule, so uh, forcing the two-point conversion tries, starting with the second one, and then that they're bringing forth, uh, it sounds like this proposal to change the fall camp to the nine helmets only, eight shells, eight full contact, two scrimmages, you know, a lot less contact, getting rid of the Oklahoma drill. I don't know if that knocks out your hamburger drill. So just what are your thoughts on all these various changes that are coming or being discussed? Well, I got to look at them all, quite honestly. I know it uh, since it wasn't part of like today's practice, I know there's some really important changes and a lot of critical data to review. Um, set aside time for later today to review all that. Uh, but right now, without having really taken a deep dive into them, it's hard to to comment on that stuff. Um, but the two point play stuff, you know, I, I, I guess, um, you know, we haven't had multiple overtime games, at least not ones that have gone into, you know, really deep in overtime, but I know that some of the games that have have spurred those kind of changes. So um, those are all things part of the game, man. Keep evolving, keep changing, roll with it and do the best that you can for your team to give yourself a chance to win. Thanks coach. Appreciate your time. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.